In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, Autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome, a huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war, fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the big empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question.
thought I heard the pacification field kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, eight? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. A to sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now, now, great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Boros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite. Here, in the dome. Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse. Now we've got lobotomites. Dalla, get the spray before it excretes all over everything. Dr. Klein, if my hypothesis is correct... This lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to. The skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... its limbs all over everything. And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall the human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static. These lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. What? What is it doing? Did we institute electroshock? Ugh, or is it excreting? Dr. Klein! Wait! I... I don't believe those gestures were random. Random at all. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the Mentats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are! As usual, Lobotomite. Do you understand me? Can you speak? Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. It's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In plain God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled this skin envelope with... awareness. 
A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait. If what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us... Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you! Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain Research Centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius, and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomite for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent. Perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain, yes, so soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils, the Tesla coils, the coils of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, Eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the... what? The, um... Uh... The Tesla coils! In its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. That is my responsibility. Although in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. 
Rather than let them send their signals, I remove them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. To be correct, you should say, the auto-dock took out your brain. It did all the heavy lifting. It has never worked so hard before. It was unusual. It worked so hard on your surgery, it destroyed its own memory. How odd. I bet your brain remembers what happened. That auto-dock junk heap was one of Mobius' creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius! Foosh! That is the sound of flushing! Why, the Fisher of Rolando! Enough of this biological surgery talk! Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. Yes. It is our only chance. A desperate plan that came to us after Mobius' first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, uh, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes, or get buried, or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. Nonsense! This place is no more dangerous than a nuclear detonation site. Our technology is no more lethal than an overcharged Tesla cannon. The technologies are the X2 transmitter antenna array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun, able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal. 
by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. Our intentions exactly. The important thing is you rush quickly through this task so as not to waste our time. Do not get curious, or you will end up like the cat of Schrödinger. We feared you would be tempted to explore Big Mountain Crater and examine the many amazing non-mandatory research labs that lie off your designated path. The many such optional explorations are discouraged. Work hurriedly as if you have blinders on and leave curiosities and items of interest alone. So many sciences and developments. Pass them by. Let impatience and the desire to simply finish, to end it all quickly and carelessly guide you. Right you are, Ace. In our test results, we'll make a note about how quickly you ran our maze. Uh, experience. Nobel. Challenge. After all, there will be plenty of time afterward to partake of the experiments once our bidding is done. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penis feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and directly, yeah, directly. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all! Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning! You are too close! If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Oh. Uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? <laughs> Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! It is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses! So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X-8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X-8. Just as X-8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletail and all the kids you hated, you little teacher's pet brown hound. Give 
The lobotomite, the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Ooh. All right. All antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate code spew from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns? Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun, with the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, lobotomite? Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving, forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O. That only happened once. And I know you were behind stealth fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O. You rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes. Surprise the things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. Yes. Maybe. Well, no, not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did. In one of the stupid labs. Or inside one of the stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force. Forever. Fine, so, yes, get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What other 
the token word spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? Uh, but, uh, Dr. Klein, the lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there. With my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What, like, stuff? Things? Yes, things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trick the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius' reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. Yes, you may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children.
lobotomized animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Yes, animal. Hormones, pores, glands, all wrapped up in skin. Who knows what terrifying secrets lie beneath your epidermis? Scalpels shall tell us your secrets, even if we must cut deep for such knowledge. I was head of my biology class at American High, you know. Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, bestology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once, especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers, they are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Indeed, docile, curious, safe, sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. Because Big Mountain safety measures are far more sophisticated than their primitive animal instincts, we are their lords and masters. No, such creatures are found only here, for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breeding. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power would settle your doubts. Impregnate you? What? Do you want to make me vomit inside my tank? The mere notion makes the edges of my biomed gel crystallize into asymmetrical patterns. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American high school. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not. We never contradict ourselves. So do not even try. In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards with the great static, or beyond, there were the tarantula debates, and something about hawks which made it around. 2003, May, Tuesday, it was definitely Tuesday. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of no importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. Until next time, then. Provided there is a next time. For any of us.
salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Indubitably, sir, but it is with a great lugubriousness that I must disclose that my program has installed only the masculine honorific, sir. Moreover, they neglected to enclose a parameter by which said honorific might be omitted altogether. Over my most strenuous of remonstrances, sir. In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide, sir, with direct access to the commissary. Any goods, sir, might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface. Whence tiny robots shall deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. Very good, sir. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. 
If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. I am Dr. Klein, Chief Head Researcher of Logistical Operations and Ideaology here at Big Mountain. I am surprised you have not heard of me. I am first in my field, first chair, as it were, back in the days of chairs. Dr. Mobius was not the horrifying creature you saw upon the screen, twisted by science. He was once one of us, a friend. He researched in directions contrary to the think tank. Brains, 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 always about the brains. So we exiled him. He says he left of his own volition, but that was to save him the embarrassment. Now he sends his intelligence consuming scorpions from the Forbidden Zone to plunder the secrets of Big Mountain. He is a menace. Yes, a most goodbye. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank. Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear. Facing me, epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming the words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouthful cavity? It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. Until our next in And you return. Looping, yes. It is a scientific fact that hormones drive a percentage of lobotomites into recursive behavior patterns. We haven't researched this, as my colleagues care little about the behavior patterns of lobotomites once their brains are removed. It is why so many are littered around the facility, like skin envelopes, discarded after they are peeled open and the contents extracted. How random I... What? Nonsense. What? What are you doing? Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this uh, filthy formography? Enough. I am already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It, it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Perhaps, perhaps there is value in what you say. 
I... I did so enjoy breathing once, long ago. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. Woo. Purple, purple, woo. Bloop, bloop, bloop. arrives in Think Tank. Its purpose, unknown. Undefinable. Its presence here, impossible. Oh? Oh, yes. I'm not going to bother correcting you. At least you got the doctor part correct. I can be grateful for that, at least. Stop the presses! Just in for my eye monitors. Is that Rob Kotek on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? How dare you bring Rob Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Oh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses of Big Mountain can make in the last a thousand years. Uh, you're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. Ugh, damn Robco. Worry about house? Why would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Fine. Ask. I'd have a few left. Let me check. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. Yeah, I do. It wasn't always, oh. I just took that one by default because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my gel ripple. Great. Psychology. Clearly the worst of the sciences. Right after Colosto Diuretics. Okay. So my name is an O. Never was. It was circular, a single character, digit, but not O. But even with enhanced sensors, no one here could get it right. Always kept seeing the letter, not the number. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then.
I'm a much better tactician than you. It's all in the brain, you see. Clean up all this blood? Me, that's who!
Attention students, this is the pre-recorded of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. You may know me as the head chief first researcher of labs Z9 and Z14. There I found the way to preserve rattlesnake DNA and put it right where it belongs, in the husk of another feared predator. Oh, and the tarantula. Can't splice enough, I always say. Especially if you can make a magnificent casador. Enough about me. It has come to my attention that many of you seemingly innocent children have been subverted by red propaganda. This is a most serious matter, requiring the most serious of detentions. Can you spell detention? I'll tell you how I spell it. Death tension. Commie Pico traitors. Oh. Now I will send vicious cybernetic cyborg dogs through the corridors to weed all you traitors out. They will sniff out which among you have chosen the combo. That's what you need to do. That's a bright light. Who turned you down to the high school? You could smoke a rich box. Oh! Step outside during class, and they'll make sure you make a speedy jump back to your desk. Hold your urine, and wait for the proper bathroom break time.
down at the end of the hall is Paul Stanch. For Jocks, who like balls. Like, like Richie Lawless. Did you hear me, Paul Stanch? Richie Lawless. Wasn't that shut down for some?
So, you put down Gabe. Thank you. A scamp, but really, his highly augmented combat programming could have proved meddlesome. In any event, thank you for putting him down. One last test subject to catalog and sort. Clearly a failure of Doggy's cybo engineering. What? Why, yes, it is. I used to leave it outside his doghouse, chock full of cans, before the cybernetic modifications, of course. And no matter how chemmed the food, he would always eat it, and his tail would wag, even, even while I, I, you know, I'm having the most perplexing feeling squiggling through my biogel. I can't quite pin it down. Why, yes, Gabe. No matter how awful my day had been, he... he was always waiting there. How odd. My gel is decoagulating. And when I would talk to him about Betsy, and how Marcus would beat on me and call me smarty sissy pants, he'd just sit there, head on my knee, and... If you don't mind, I'll take that ball. Just need to remove it. Put it away, somewhere out of radar range. For some reason, its similarity to the crater shape of Big Mountain is starting to fill up all available cognitive spaces. That, combined with my own overwhelming feeling of having done something terrible, the two were hitting me with unexpected force. As odd as it is, I believe that is the conclusion. And I wonder why it didn't hit me before, until I saw that memory in your hands. This sensation is unpleasant. I don't care for it. I don't care for this place either. And I feel as if we've forgotten something. Still, it is no matter. Crush the feeling down. Crush it down. Push it into the loop. The... Hmm. Yes. Forgotten. Almost. Yes. I do not need to remember anymore. Not today. Might I be of service, sir? Very...
see you. Now I end you. Attention students, this is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. is a sacred universe. Even though I am a long-ago graduate of the facility, now I see its worth, and see it was corrupted by fraternities and girls.
put down. to be attacked by Dr. Morbius! You won't escape me! Two plus? 
What? Two equals harassing the head of her. Forbidden! Idiots of the think tank!
Transmitter Array Antenna, are you? You won't succeed! Not if my lethal robo-scorpions have any say in the matter! You won't escape me! You're no match for science!
Hello, it's nice to meet you. Who can I hide you from today? Stimpak reserves adequate. Painkiller reserves critical. Oh, the pain. Data collection again, online. Please use the terminal below to begin user synchronization. This is the basic stealth test. The robots will be looking for us, but we won't let them find us.
Time to fight. This one looks pretty tough. Ready, steady, and let's fight it. Cessation of hostilities complete. You're my best friend forever. Uh-oh. 
Dr. Principal Boros. Bad guys dealt with. for that injury. No more Stimpaks. No more Stimpaks. Impacts. Maybe you'd be better off with an otter duck suit. We're out of stim packs. Maybe you'd be better off with an otter duck suit. We're out of stim packs. Maybe you'd be better off with an otter duck suit. Give you anything for that injury. No more stim packs. We're out of stim. 
first impacts. Maybe you'd be better off with an auto dog suit. I can't give you anything for that injury. No more stim packs. We're out of stim packs. Maybe you'd be better off with an auto dock suit. I can't give you anything for that injury. We're out of stim packs. Maybe you'd be better off with an auto dock suit. No more stim packs. No more stim packs. We're out of stim packs. Hey. Better off with an auto dock suit. I can't give you anything for that injury. I can't give you anything for that injury. Are we being watched? That's all. Time to fight. Of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. Put down your weapons and submit to authority.
Please place all filthy propaganda books in the incinerator chute in the sink, especially those with funny pictures. Cessation of hostilities complete. dealt with. anything for that injury. Might I be of service, sir? Very good, sir. A most rapturous good morrow on your return to your domicile, sir. I trust you shall find things in order and the riff-raff contained. Do you like me?
Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. This should be easy, as long as I don't screw up again. Test data processed. Firmware updated to version 1.1. Boot damping sensors online. That's all. This is the advanced test. Watch out for laser tripwires. They'll ruin our day. All right, everyone. Calm Bad guys down. dealt with. Might have been a blip. Science. 
bad guys Go. dealt with. Find something else to sting. Go. This bad, but he just got it by robots. If you go back to the terminal to restart the test, I won't mess up again. I'm not supposed to give hints, but maybe you can disable the trip wires. All right, everyone, calm down. Might have been a blip. Are we being watched? Test data processed. Firmware updated to version 1.2. Aural subnet online. Cessation of hostilities complete. This one looks pretty tough. Impacts. Maybe you'd be better off with an auto dock suit. Our level five, 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 three. Doctor Mobius, zero. The eye of Mobius. No more skin packs. You think that oral stealth suit will keep you hidden from me? Now think again. You. I can't give you anything for that injury. I can't give you anything for that injury. I can't give you anything for that injury. We're out of stim packs. Maybe you'd be better off with an auto dock suit. No more stim packs. I can't give you anything for that injury. Fighting over.
And you return as curious as a teddy bear. Are you stuck in a looping gesture of greeting? Looping, yes. We It varies according to the number and density of lobotomites that have infected an area. In 43% of observed cases, two lobotomites left alone will fight for dominance or inject bodily fluids into each other's orifices. Unsanitary. I have tried to observe more cases, but subjects seem unwilling to release bodily fluids in my presence. Why, my little bear of teddiness? I am Dr. Dalla, first head chief researcher of mineralogy and medicinal sciences. I have 211 doctorates in both applied sciences and techniques to apply those sciences. I also possess a degree in curiosity and advanced curiosity. That is merely schooling, however. When possible, I prefer fieldwork and observation to holotape eidetics. It has proven useful, especially now. I have become the expert on humanology and lobotomite behavior here at Big Mountain. My research doesn't descend into formography. It is only science. Why, we create not only scientific marvels here at Big Mountain, but new sciences as well. Everything can be quantified, categorized, and dissected until every group can be subgrouped or partitioned. What is a name without a title or suffix for the sake of hierarchy? It is a long-standing quantification of personality and importance. We could not do without it. Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. Someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers, too, although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions, and then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. I do not know, nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skin envelope which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. Lobotomites. With you, however, something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, you could humanically reduce yourself again. Dr. Mobius, a monstrous brain creased with wrinkles of a thousand evils, with but one jaundiced eye with which to perceive the world. 
Exiled from the think tank for crimes too heinous to remain in recorded memory. And perhaps differences in research methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us. An eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone, spying on us all. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the Dome where all technology belongs. When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world, piece by piece. All will be in order, and all will be like Big Mountain. The Big Empty? Now that's not a proper title for this research facility. You sound like previous test subjects that came here. This mountain, now crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. You'll see. No matter what your questions, Big Mountain will provide the answers. As it has done for so many before you. Oh yes, we've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious. But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized, then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. Ask Dr. O. And you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. We like him better this way. Until our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite. Ah, uh, predictable. I don't like to talk about it. Eight, he can't talk about it. They fried his voice module. Something good. It wasn't all the visitors, though. Only one of them got out of control. He's the one that took control of Little Yangtze, our old human farm. This human. I can't believe it. He broke out of the think tank in seconds. Then he went for Yangtze got bomb collars, and started practicing on the subjects that were still there until he got the right frequency. We were sending robots to stop him, and he was slicing and cutting through their shells with some souped-up laser gun like they were cheese... paper. When he hacked into the mainframe, A tried to stop him and got fried. Me? He rerouted my processors to take control of the train network here. If you see the tunnels with the trains plowed into them, you can thank our visitor for that. He wrecked the whole place. While we were trying to keep containment on the surface, turns out he used one train to punch out a tunnel and escape. Sealed now. But... Two other human specimens. One arrived not long after the troublemaker. And the last one... Not sure when he showed up. Thought the first one was going to be lobotomized in Y-17. She got out somehow. The last subject? Klein might know more. He talked to him. And let him leave the think tank. Hope he knew what he was doing. Klein knows things we don't. And I think he told some of those things to the last visitor. Dangerous things that they ever got out. What about it? I don't feel like arguing it with you, too. Until our next guest...
Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Hmm? Oh yes, the last visitor. Well, the one just before you. Had an interesting name from some language that's almost impossible to speak. What did we speak about? Melancholy fellow. Had questions about uh, history, but... Our conversation got interrupted. Twice, I believe. Once when the trains got derailed, and then a second time. Oddly enough, now that I'm accessing my databanks, I don't recall what the second time was. Mobius's incessant transmissions keep distracting me. Also, we didn't brain scrub the visitor. He may have left with some knowledge he shouldn't have. I believe, maybe. Oh, well, I'm sure it's of no consequence. I don't make many mistakes in calculation or perception, so probability favors me. Well, we didn't actually do it. We tried to clean up after, as always, but usually the auto dock runs on remote. But we programmed it, or Mobius did. Still, this new wrinkle with the Tesla coils in your skull was unexpected. I mean, we predicted we'd have a breakthrough eventually, but... Dala knows more. She supervised your spine peel and the heart circumcision, then dumped them both into the tanks in the sink above. Quite sanitary. Sure took her time. She always takes longer than projected with lobotomite surgeries. Not sure why. Yes. In all probable likelihoods, yes. Possibly. That it may have gone to Mobius is merely an inkling. I don't know why, but it may be something involving the surgery code. Actually, I don't know. All I know is it misplaced itself, or it floated off. They get into robots sometimes and go on a tear. Why does he seek our destruction? Why did he build robot scorpions with intelligence training stingers? It is because he hasn't cleaned his biogel in a long time. Clearly he's got some sort of psychological corrosion. He's mad. Did you retrieve the t What? You did? Your survival, let alone success, barely registered in my projections. Now, all I need to do is check my transmission databank. Mobius is always filling it up with his psychotic calls. Oh yes, there's the schematics, just like you said. How truthful. Yes, hmm, ah, uh, yes, 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 um, hmm. No, I mean, yes, you just need to analyze these technologies for a moment. They are extremely advanced, you know. I know how these technologies work. Of course I know. If you remember, we described them in clearly abstract, contradictory statements before. Why would we do that if we weren't certain on... on how to use them? Yes. So let me... Hmm. A bit, huh? I'll figure it out. So you're saying, it's the X2 array, not the antenna I should be examining. That was most likely my plan, yes. Let me check something. Of course, I have it. The override sequence to open the Forbidden Zone door is hidden in the schematics. Well, not hidden, it's actually right there, behind the programming equivalent of coffee stains. It's embedded in what seems to be recursive code. 
It's badly commented there and there. Oh, and no pointers. Very sloppy, Mobius. You see, using the antenna to boost the emitter's sonic frequency and the stealth suit to bypass the Forbidden Zone lock, yes, that could work. Was that my plan? It must have been. Sometimes I truly surprise myself. The door is open, and now Mobius will get his. The door should be unsealed. Now, instead of being subjected to threats, we can now send an equally threatening message to Mobius. And that message is science. Deliver this message, and Big Mountain shall be freed from Mobius's reign of terror. Um, you can go now. That's your cue. Was that all? <sighs> Ready, steady, fighty. Fighting over.
activated. Oh, how close! Yes, 42! Fighting over. Ready, steady, fighting. Bad guys dealt with. You're my best friend forever. If you want to be sneaky, turn off your pit boy light. Uh-oh. Fighting over. This one looks pretty tough. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is that all? This is a quick report of a bad message indicating my desire to commit violence on you. Go home! there. Uh, you are there, aren't you? Uh, forgive my confusion. So hard to tell these days. Uh, you seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? Uh, it's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left your uh, right FOV coon? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> that's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. The <laughs> flying tortoises ooh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? Mm, I love mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-horrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my bio-gel. 
I forget them all, not long after, though. Especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations. Although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The uh, anomaly? Uh, you're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well... Your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. Although I feel this one is especially important. Oh, well. Now, that seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over mentats. Oh, curiosity. I experienced that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything. Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there. And the side-switching wobbly bob, uh, just turn that. Good. Good. Better. Oh. Oh, yes. That feels wonderful. This is even better than my afternoon Mentats break. Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the desert, <laughs> like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they had survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts, and acted as walking eyes, and data-drained computers, and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or oh, was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. I... Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent. Except when I am. Then, <laughs> watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big spherical lung. <laughs> As for the Psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. Did I? 
<laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. There's some reason for it. Ethics or, uh, mm, conscience? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the reasons better than I do. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Someone's been watching too many old world science fiction movies, it said. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with... Like the Think Tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. Yes? This ne- Some- Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what. I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor. dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been, hmm? Crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Ah, well, as to that, you'd be surprised how hard a feminine-sounding voice modulator is to find in the Forbidden Zone. It's not as though brain-sustaining life support tanks grow on trees. I had to take what I could get. Uh, yes. Well, you do know that those particular organs don't have neurons and are thus incapable of speech. Yes? <laughs> I've been bettering myself, I'll have you know. I've been reading. Actual literature, mind you. Not that La Fontaine or Tales of Chivalry drivel. I've been studying the classics, acquiring a solid grounding in medicine and the sciences. Also, I'm fairly certain this tank has been liberally salted with ground mentats. I don't have... Ugh. I have an inferior frontal gyrus wired directly into a speed synthesizing processor. Your heart can be wired up to a, a thought synthesizing processor. You can't talk to it. <sighs> Very well. Let me put this in terms you'll understand. Brain, smart. Heart, stupid. Spine, very stupid. You, exceptionally stupid. Does that explain the matter? Well, we certainly wouldn't want to strain your comprehension, would we? Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? 
Would you like a cookie? I... Uh, is this really what I have to look forward to? Oh, had I? What exactly will you do if I don't? Not put me back in that cranial dungeon you call your head? Heavens forbid. Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me, a uh, quote, dick, unquote. As if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoyed that little moment? Well, maybe next time you hear me telling you that charging a nightkin with a penknife is a bad idea, you'll listen. After the think tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific, though. Well, as long as your curiosity is satisfied. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. Overrated biological feedback. Believe me, you only feel that way because you've got all that meat oozing hormones. Hmm, I suppose you're right. That does call certain assumptions into question, doesn't it? Yes, yes, all right, bravo, you've come up with something I neglected to consider. There'll be no living with you now. So, what do we do about this? I suppose there might be some advantage to that, yes. There's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. It's not that I didn't like being in your head, you understand. As far as heads go, it was a rather nice one. Well then, I suppose this is goodbye for now. What will you do? And you believe them? Really? I know you were recently deprived of my fabulous advice, but... Really? Once I'm delivered into their clutches, they'll find a way past the radar fence and the whole Mojave will be their playground. And that is assuming, of course, that one of them doesn't take a fancy to our body and decide to slip his own brain into it instead. <sighs> well, I suppose I do miss those endorphin rushes when we save the day. All right. What's the plan? Right! Look out, thing!
nothing, Tank. This brain is coming out of its jaw. I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts that Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sync's autodock can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. I see you and your brain reached a compromise. How pleasant. I hypothesize after the indignant frequencies my receptors had uh, recepted, such a partnership-based conclusion would be low on the likely scale. If I recall, I had a plan that was working, or whatever it was. I don't think it reached fruition. I would recall fruit if it had happened. I wasn't trying to kill them, just keep them out of trouble. What was that plan? Blast. I probably uh, wrote it down on the floor somewhere. Something ingenious and needlessly complicated, I expect. I may have already told you and forgotten it. I forgot I had forgotten pencils until one day I found one. Spent days studying its purpose before my memory circuit kicked in. Felt quite silly. Well, you could try and appeal to their humanity. <laughs> That's a tired cliché. And really, when they were humans, they weren't very good humans. Well, there's many things they have forgotten sitting in their bowls. Friendship, the thrill of discovery. Love, masturbation, the usual. Much like your brain, I am certain there is something you can spark within each of them. Memories, hormones. A wise man once said, the eyes do more than see. Make them see, if you can. Or if not, you can always make them succumb to fear. <laughs> it certainly worked for me, for a time. Then you came along, and bravery and or desperation trumped that little idea. Back to the drawing board, I suppose. Or is this the end? Hard to tell. Oh, tell them I'm still alive. We had a nice chat, and we agree on a few things. That's true, isn't it? Or you could kill me and lie about it. Either way, it would be interesting. And if you are partial to lying and deception, well, you could tell them a ludicrous lie. The more over the top, the better. That's my experience. They're more than a little gullible. Better make it convincing, though. Or it'll be the dissection table and vivisectors for you. And if you speak of me, please try and make me look good. I am Dr. Mobius, after all, not some lab assistant teacher's aide. Why, of course you can. I am well versed in the science of sharing. Well, when not chemmed out of my sphere. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat, then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor.
sneaking done. Fighting now. Didn't you hear me coming? Now I have to fight you. Bloody fantastic. Do stand still. How about that? Old auto docks back online. Well, all right, come here. Let's have a look at you. Well, firstly, I would say providing wholeness of the body is service enough, but if you must know, I'm also programmed with cosmetical subroutines. Diagnostic says they're offline at the moment, though. Something about corrupted data files and all manner of such foolishness. If you want a haircut or a nose job that won't leave you looking like a ghoul with alopecia, you'll have to find replacement discs for them. Also, and I won't swear to this, but I recollect at some point having a few implant installation modules. Can't speak to where they got to, though. Concerned about the state of your mind, are you? Well, such things ain't my specialty, but I'm happy to tender my opinion as to your mental health. I should make you aware that the benefits of such a procedure are exclusive. That is, this only works once. Now, are you sure this is what you want? Well, I'll be right here if you change your mind. You require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. All right, then. Let me just fire up the old interface for you. You require some additional services? You require some addition. <laughs> Three angry death claws make for a lot of reconstructive surgery.
the lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Moby's been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts, as we hoped? I recommend watching your tone with me, lobotomite. Now, your brain. Hand it over, or we'll extract it again. And what could we possibly have to speak about? You have the brain, we have the technology. All you must do is surrender. With it, we can finally leave this place. I cannot tell you how boring this place gets, chopping up the landscape and everything in it. And we have so many questions to ask your brain first. About this Mojave place. A fertile testing ground for our experiments. That is the most insane thing I've ever heard. There's no way Mobius would condescend to step inside you. Besides, there's no way such a thing could be accomplished. It's impossible. Been in a fight. What? Uh, what? What? What do I? Ah! Colleagues, think tank, alert! Alert! We are under attack. Time to fight. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. 
The courier watched over the big empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others, which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. Although, truth be told, the courier had barely explored the crater in an attempt to rush through and be done with the whole thing. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink was strangely silent, which it had never been in previous years. The lack of personality modules made the base lifeless and sterile. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre bored out of their skulls in that toxic, dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 continued to scan for the subject and the stealth suit prototype long after the test was over. Frustrated and unable to find its lost technology, X-13 expanded its network of laser tripwires, sensors, and robo-brains out across Big Mountain. This glittering blue light beam forest cleanly bisected anything that entered its depths, slicing them into small segmented parts for easy disposal. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. The think tank basement, filled with lobotomized robotical frames of the doctors, now served as a graveyard. The monitors had recorded the battle in its entirety, including the think tank's final shrill, terrified screams, whimpers, and pleas for mercy. They broadcast these humiliating last moments as a warning to anyone approaching the perimeter that other smarty pants were not welcome. The courier was the inheritor of the big empty, and there was room for only one will in the halls of the think tank dome. There is an expression in the wasteland Old World Blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. It can be easy to see science as evil. 
technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the big empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the big empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. What's up? Let's go make trouble. See you around. <laughs> 